Hello everybody, welcome back to Music Talk Live number 43. Um, I see there's quite a few of you already, so hello everyone, join the chat room please, let me know how you're doing and if you are one of the usual suspects or if you're a newcomer to this series and it's as always Saturday 6.30 p.m. Central European time a bit screwed up before because of the of the daylight saving time so I don't know exactly what time it is where you're at but I think we're all on the same page and please let me stress how important it is that you hit that bell when you're subscribing to the channel if you subscribe because um, you know I try to be steady with my uploads and my lives but you never know so hit that bell if you don't want to miss it and I think last week or two weeks ago a few people got here like an hour late because we we forward the clocks uh, like a week or two before they did so uh, today's video is going to be just a little Q&A we're going to talk about music and uh, who knows we might be maybe I don't know I have a few ideas for future series so I'll think about it and give you some update very soon but uh, the one core the week series that we're doing every Tuesday which I suggest you watch and I won't plug it anymore but it's really cool that one um, I only have like, I don't know, well only, probably like 10 videos to record, which is quite a bit, there's quite a bit of editing to them because, I, you know, I put the, the core shapes and all that. But when those are done, those will be scheduled, I mean, that's crazy, Th those are scheduled until the end of the week, I mean, until the end of, uh, of the summer. And they will probably be going until September or October. And the reason I'm recording all of those, and then I have to edit them later, is because there might be some changes coming up so I want to make sure that that series always stays on because I think it's extremely useful and then I have a couple of ideas for new series uh, one of them is the 21 leaks series where I will teach you one of those leaks that I'll talk about in a second and then another one that I don't want to give away yet but it's gonna be fun and I think it's probably gonna be on Thursdays so I don't know maybe we'll focus these Saturday things on something a bit lighter instead of being so heavy on teaching but it's up to you too so let me know what you guys think hello Alex the Safinados so Alex, please share a link to what you did, if you can, to the chat room. I don't want to touch anything, just in case, but just in case you don't know, uh, Alex is a great guitar player, of course, has a great YouTube channel. If you like guitar music, he has his own music, but he's, he's probably even more known because of his covers. So he does a lot of covers. He's done Steve Vai and he's done, um, you know, um, Andy Timmons, right? Uh, you've done everybody. You've done Jason Becker. You've done all these people. And uh, so last week he sends me an email saying, or a message saying, check out this video I made. And it's a song one. So I was going to share it on the stream, but I didn't want to download your video, Alex. I don't know how you feel about me doing that. So what I'll do is I'll just link it when the video is over. But you fr feel free to share it right now in the comments and in the chat room, because you guys should check it out. You know, he played the version of one, just great sounding track. So Alex, thank you very much. And uh, I suggest everybody goes and watch it. And then while you're there, you can watch his, you know, to have a look at it. his whole channel is, is just great. And uh, Alex hails from Zaragoza, Spain. So do whatever you want, my friend. All right. Well, maybe I will next time. I'll, I'll do a little clip from it. But you, should, you guys should watch it. You know, he's, he's great. Makes me feel bad, actually. And um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed it, Alex. It was great. And I think it took you, you know, although you're very good, but it probably took you a long time to do all that. So thanks very much. All right. That's, that was great. Thank you. Uh, what else is new? Well, let me just share this little animation with you so we get that out of the way. And please do that. If you haven't done it, it really helps me out, you know, especially with, uh, with letting YouTube know that you're into it and then you can... Um, probably help me reach more people uh, now I want to show you something that I think it's fun uh, oh first of all last night I was up until 5 30 a.m. trying to fix the dishwasher and I don't I know nothing about dishwashers but I figured that um, I'll fix it I'll do it myself so I opened it up opened a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be opened, so I had to close it back again and then I had the brilliant idea that I, th I said well probably the reason the water is still there is because there's something going on that in the in the in the you know in the in the circuit or somewhere that, that is plugging it. So I poured a chemical, um, like the, the little liquid for, um, for clearing the pipes, I put it in the dishwasher and I don't know why, I think I was sleep deprived and I turned the dishwasher on and five minutes later the whole kitchen is filled with this toxic foam and it, it's, it's so dense that I can't wash it. It's so dense that I, I pour water on it and the water just sinks to the bottom 
and the foam is still there. And I swear to you, I thought of taking a picture for you guys to, tonight, but I was so out of it that I said, okay, forget it. I won't take a picture, but I'll just tell them. But I was just this close to a, to a chemical apocalypse, and I was still thinking of you guys and thinking of snapping a picture for you. So you just have to imagine it. Imagine me in my kitchen <laughs> at 5.30 in the morning and uh, with the dishwasher blowing up, foam everywhere, and it took me until 6 or some 6.30 probably, one hour it took me to clean it up. And this morning it was still foamy everywhere. So anyway, that's what I did. And I also want to show you what happens when you go out with me for a walk on the city. So this is a little sh store here in Barcelona. And check this out. I can't hear myself now. I, can hear, I can't hear the video, but I think you, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a little sampler app. It's called Koala. And you see all those toys, and I went ahead and uh, sampled all of them, all of them. And this is the result, check this out. So this is what I could do later, which was have a little kit of these little toys that I sampled in the store. As a matter of fact, some of them have, you know, in the tail, you still hear all the, you still hear the people talking in the music background. But I'll do something with this. I'll do a little loop and maybe I'll share it with you. Maybe put it to some tape or something. And it's a, little, it's a, it's a fun thing to do. I have no idea if you're hearing me now because I'm talking over the music. But let me get rid of this. It's a real fun thing to do and uh, I can do it anywhere. So I can go on a trip somewhere and kind of make a song or a, or a loop or make some kind of musical thing with the sounds of the place. So sometimes you'll see me tapping on the side of a pyramid or something and that's what I'm doing. So if you see me out there doing that, I'm sampling. All right, so what else? I'm opening it up for questions. So as soon as the room fills up a bit more, we'll do a Q&A. But if you have any questions, Alex, and those of you who are not in the chat, please let me know. I'm, I'm available for any questions you might have. In the meantime, I suggest uh, this little thing here, the 21 Leaks book. It's a free book. You can get it right now. It, it's a link below in the, in the description. It's, uh, there's no strings attached. You can just download it. And it's a bunch of licks and musical ideas and riffs, and you can use it to study technique, maybe learn a few things about composition. You can see a few examples of how to use maybe certain devices, finger style, um, all kinds of stuff, all right? So you, could, um, you can check it out, and then any questions you have, feel free to ask. And for those of you who don't know, here are the two... Oh, this is supposed to look a lot bigger than that. And these are the two books that... Let me fix it for you. Well, forget it. It's fine. It's two books that I've uh, written about alternate picking and legato and they're really useful if you want to improve your techniques. And links are below. Hello, that is Art from Canada. What's up? YouTube, check this later if you want. Zach Wilde plays Black Sabbath on Hello Kitty mini guitar. All right, I will. The video is pretty good. Yeah. So hello, everyone. So I see there's quite a few people coming in. Are you aware that Frank Gambali has moved to Barcelona? Take a coffee or invite him to the studio. Oh, I had no idea. Ricardo Santos, hello from Portugal. Hello, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How is Portugal? I think you guys are doing great with the COVID thing, so congratulations. I know you went through a hard patch lately, but you know, you, you guys are great with that. Oh yes, thanks, that is art. All is well here. Alex, how do you know about Frank Gambali? Is he actually living in Barcelona? I will give him a call. I will say, hello, this is Andre Tonelli. And you know, I'll tell him, Alex made a cover of my song. That means I am famous. By the way, you know, Alex, you made me happy because you cover such great guitar players in your, in your, uh, on your channel that it's an honor. So for those of you who are just, who are just got in here, check out Alex's channel. He made a cover, a great cover of one, of the song one from Feel the Sky. Check it out, he did a great job. Uh, hello, Jenny. That is brilliant. Koala is the application. Yes, it's called Koala. I think it's really cheap. I don't know. I don't remember. I bought it a while ago, but it's really cheap. And it's limited, you know, but it's fun to, it's fun to do. But it's a pain in the butt to go with me somewhere because I stop everywhere and record stuff. Sorry, on the Facebook page, he's living in Barcelona as far as I know. Well, I'll give him a call. I say, hey, Frank, <laughs> what's up? But yeah, so anyway, today is about uh, questions and maybe in time we'll kind of switch a little bit towards maybe music news and gear news and not really into, you know, I, I have to find a formula that is interesting because I think sometimes on Saturday night you don't want to be studying too much. I want to tape a train going by. 
Oh yes, it's probably been done, but you can do it. Let's see if we can enjoy the spring and summer outside. Well, yeah, well, spring, I think, uh, looks pretty tough, but the summer, the summer, I think, uh, there's a good shot. We are falling way behind here, but, you know, uh, who knows? Luckily, my parents, they are getting, vaccine, they're getting vaccinated um, this week, actually. And, well, next week, like in a few days, so back in Milan. And so they'll be okay, and we're kind of young, so we're not too concerned. So, but yeah, so today's going to be very relaxed. You can ask me questions, you can just use the chat room and we can talk about whatever you want. But if you have any questions regarding music or guitar, please feel free to ask. Uh, maybe concerning previous videos, maybe concerning the one chord a week thing, maybe something you're writing with or composing with, you know, whatever it is you need, let me know and we'll have a little chat, just as if we were sitting together in a room. And uh, so I'll look for your questions, I'll just wait for them. In the meantime, what else is new? Um, well, actually, on Monday, I'm talking to some guys who might we might start a new project that is very interesting. I can't talk about it, but it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I just didn't want to do it, you know, not properly. And this time it looks like it's going to be really cool. So <clears throat> I'll share that information as soon as I have it. But uh, yeah, so please send me some questions so I know what to do. Otherwise, I'll just be sitting here staring at the screen, not knowing what to do. All right, so anything at all, and in the meantime, did you see the augmented chord uh, this week? The it's a really cool. How is it going with the studio? Are you mastering or mixing other people's work? As a matter of fact, I usually I don't, but I have been because after after Lights and Shadows, actually because of the sound of the record. Uh, I've been asked and asked and asked and I was a bit um, shy about it because I can work a lot on my music, you know, spend a lot of time on it, really get into all the details and then uh, eventually somebody who was closer to me asked me to mix his record and I did and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed mixing other people's stuff and so I started doing it and I'm working on a project starting in uh, <clears throat> June, I think. We're going to start on a project with... Um, with a band here in Barcelona and they do some kind, and they listen to Mystic Electric actually, and they say, we want that sound for something. And I say, well, you can't get that sound because you, know, you have vocalists and stuff and it's, it's more pop oriented. Mine is very mystical, as the name says. And uh, so, yeah, the studio, goes, you know, what's going great actually is the, the school. We, I have a music school here in Barcelona called Guitar Studio and it's going great. Strangely enough, because with COVID, we assumed that we would have a hard time, but it's going pretty well. And uh, I'm actually going to launch very soon the Guitar Studio online. So nobody knows about it yet, but I guess now they will do. And uh, it's going to be focused on online lessons, one-on-one, -on -one, just as if it were private lessons. Because what happened was during COVID, we all were scared that what's going to happen to people teaching guitar. You know, I have people here who work and uh, we were concerned that, that we could have problems. You know, people wouldn't know how to respond to teaching online and learning online without actually being there one-on-one -on -one. and um, and we were surprised by the fact that a lot of people that tried the 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 online lessons of so skype or zoom you know whatever they, they use facetime now they don't want to come back right because they're some of them some of my students come from pretty far away and so maybe they have to drive 40 minutes 45 minutes maybe an hour to get here and now they're going like well you know today i'm gonna be tired or today i got back a bit late from work or maybe today it's raining and i'm on my bike and uh, so maybe we should just keep doing it on Skype. And so I'm going to start a whole new section of the studio. And the cool thing is that it's open to everybody all across the world. So as a matter of fact, some of you here already are my students and uh, from different countries, from Thailand. And I have students from the UK, from America, of course, from Spain, even from Barcelona. And they just don't, sh don't come. And um, and, you know, it, it's been going really well. So I want to set it up now in, in a proper way because it's been something we kind of jumped into. And then so, yes, quite a few things. And then there's something, another interesting thing coming up with the Academy, with the Guitar Studio School, and that will be announced soon. But, you know, it kind of ties into the online thing. So thanks for asking, Alex. Yeah. You know, music, music is this thing, musicians, 
we always have to kind of, um, you, you, all, you all have an idea what it is your career will be. And I've talked to all musicians that I know. I know a lot of musicians, some of them very, very well known and, and, and extremely um, proficient and popular. And we all agree that, y you know, you have this direction, but you keep turning left and right and finding new avenues. And, uh, and this thing has been one of them. You know, the, the guitar studio, the music school is what's allowing me to be able to make whatever record I want, to say no to anybody I don't want to play with, to not go out and play in a band that I don't enjoy, you know. And so it's important to always find different avenues. And um, so it's been really great. So we'll focus a lot on, on online lessons. And actually, I'm working on a video to announce it because I know some people across the, you know, around the world, they would enjoy doing lessons. And they've already asked me. And so, yeah, that's what's going on with that. It's a lot of work to set it up properly, but, you know, eventually. And then eventually I want to prepare something else, again, based online. But I don't know. We'll talk about it then. Ricardo, I'm trying to get some time to follow your chord videos. Thank you for those. I'm a beginner and sometime ear chord substitution. Is this a, an actual subject? You mean using one chord instead of another? Is that what you're saying? I'm afraid I'm not. Thank you for the, I'm a beginner and sometime ear chord substitution. Oh, you hear people talk about that, right? I think. Yes, it's certainly, a, a, it is a true subject. Yes. And it's pretty hard to tackle if you, I don't know your current level. You say you're a beginner, but I have no idea what you know about chords. But the idea is that you have, you have some very basic functions in music and in harmony. By harmony, I mean when you play uh, functionally. So you play in, with chords. We're talking about chords. And I think uh, a little digression here, but when you I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not taking this as a lesson. I'm going to talk to you as if you're sitting on a sofa together and we're just talking about music, all right? So if I go too far out, stop me. But uh, there's this big thing that when somebody starts learning guitar, they separate, like they separate melody and they separate harmony. So they think I'm going to study chords and then I'm going to study scales. Me, I studied and I knew nothing. But then slowly I went more into technique, for example, and then I realized I had no idea what I was doing. And then so I started learning some scales, but then I had no idea how to use the chords behind them. So, you know, you, you have that dichotomy in the beginning where you think this and that. But eventually, as you get better, you, and if you progress enough in your, um, in your musical knowledge, you realize that it's all really the same. So I like to talk about learning chords for scales and playing scales as, with chords, because really that's what happens, because you... you, you it, it kind of cross-pollinates between the two. I won't get into more details of that. I will if you want me to. But So the basic idea here, returning to your question, is that you do have certain functions, right? And there's usually two big functions. Well, maybe three. Let's talk about three big functions, which are, um, which are the tonic function, there's the subdominant region, and there's the dominant region. And this is, of course, uh, malleable. So, you know, this is not written in stone. If you read uh, classical music uh, treaties from maybe um, the beginning of the 19th century, they're very specific on certain terms. Newer stuff like jazz and, uh, you know, Joe Pass, um, more theoretical things. You read stuff by Chick Corea, you read stuff by... It's different, you know, everybody kind of moves around and everybody kind of reaches that point in different ways. So if you are coming from a strictly classical tradition, then you will actually follow a certain, a certain degree of, um, you know, you'll be kind of precise with it because you're coming from a long, you know, long generations of, of getting that information from the teacher to the student to the teacher to the student to the teacher to the student. But we in modern music, we kind of pick stuff up everywhere. And so you read maybe Alan Holsworth and he, he talks about things in a totally different way than if you read Joe Pass, but really we're talking about similar stuff. So, uh, there's this tonic uh, region, which is where everything wants to go back to, right? So imagine, I always discuss it like this with my students, so you get a taste of what it's like to be tortured by me. So imagine, um, like, when you go to a race and you win, you, you come in second, third, and first, right? So you have, or imagine just a simple three-step stair. And you, when you go on the first step, so kind of the ground floor, that's where you start. That's your tonic level. So that's where you're at. If you play a tonic chord, that chord doesn't really want to go anywhere. I can just stay there forever. If you go from one tonic chord to another tonic chord, 
then you still can stay there forever. None of these two chords really want to push you anywhere, right? You're just as happy here as you are here. You can go back if you want to, or you can just stay here. See what I mean? Now, it's different when you go to another region, such as a subdominant region. For example, a subdominant chord in C major is F. So if I go from C to F, you'll notice that you can't quite stay there. So now your ear says, well, where are we going to go now, right? And the first option is to go back to one. So basically you take that step and then you walk your way down, right? So you go up and down. And so that's the idea. Right? So ground floor, first floor, ground floor. Now, you might be asking, well, isn't there a second floor? Well, there is. And that's the dominant region. And so the dominant region, you'll see it now. I'm going to play a simple chord, a G chord. And maybe I'll play seventh version. And you'll hear how from the F. I'm still even higher. And I want to go back now even more than I wanted to when I was on the F. See, so that's kind of what happens. You have the tonic floor or, or level, the subdominant level, where you can either go back down to tonic or you can work your way up even higher to the dominant level. And the dominant level, the easiest thing to do is just jump down. So you jump the two frets and you, the, the two steps, and you go way down to the floor again, and it's like this. Tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic. Uh, in certain styles of music, like uh, blues and of course jazz, you, might, you, you can walk up and then walk back down, not jump. So you can go root, tonic, I'm uh, sorry, uh, tonic, subdominant, dominant, subdominant, and root again. And that's very typical of the blues. So that's the basic, basic, basic basics of, um, of functions. And so for each of these chords, or for each of these functions, you have many options of chords. And some chords are similar. So instead of a G7, you can play a G9, or you can play uh, a G7 sus4. I'm just saying chords that are in the series that I know I've recorded. I don't know if they're published yet because I have this big thing in my mind now that I have, <laughs> I have like a thousand things that I recorded. That I don't know if they've been released yet, but you'll get them eventually if you watch the whole series. And so you can get these chords that you, f you figure, okay, well, I know that G9 can be too far away from G7. But then there are other chords that they kind of feel this, they, you know, they have the same function, but they have a totally different name. And that's where people get, get uh, confused, but it's really simple, you know, and so that's what substitutions are, really. They are different chords, sometimes extremely different chords, but that have the same function. And I don't know, I, I'm going to give you a quick example, right, very quickly. I hope you guys are not getting bored. I'm kind of focusing on Ricardo, but I hope maybe some of you will get something out of this. And um, so, I play D minor 7th, I play G 7th, and I play C. Okay, so this is a basic, a basic 2 5 one progression, very typical in all kinds of music, and in jazz as well. And so I have subdominant region, dominant region, tonic region. All right, oh, Patrick, thank you so much. I just seen it. I'll, I'll get back to you, I, I know there's a question there, so I'll get right back to you. I'm just going to finish up with Ricardo really quick. So we have subdominant, dominant, root. Okay, now check this out. I'm playing D minor 7th, G 7th, and I'm playing C. Now I'm going to play something totally different in the middle chord. D minor 7th, D flat 7th, and C. You see, this is a totally different chord. What, what does G 7th have to do with D flat 7th? Right? Surprisingly, Nothing, but surprisingly enough, it has a lot in common because of the triton, something we won't get into. And, uh, and you see how one chord is substituting for another to the same effect, not to the same sound, okay? If it were the same sound, you would just play the first chord. Uh, you wouldn't go through all the trouble. But it is the same function, so I'm going subdominant, 
dominant, more elevated, resolution. Now I can do subdominant, dominant, root. And it's the same function, but not the same chord. And that's in a few minutes, or as quickly as I can, uh, a little introduction to substitutions for chords. I hope it was useful. And um, yeah, so that's one of the hard things that I'm trying to overcome with the online lesson thing, because it's uh, sometimes it's, you know, I do want to share. And, and you know, guys, I've been doing this for long enough. You know, I share, I, I don't keep anything to myself, but it's just the mechanics of YouTube, you know, they are limiting in a way. In another way, they're really fun because this is fun to just talk about guitar. Radakrishan, sir, thank you. What is meant by scale? All right, well, let me get to Patrick first, just because I'm selling myself out. No, Patrick, it's really appreciated your contribution. Because I think Radha, wait, let me, Radhakrishnan, right? Radhakrishnan, I think you got some of that idea from the previous answer and maybe from this one, and otherwise I get back to you right away. Patrick says, uh, could you demonstrate your technique for bending vibrato, bend up a whole tone first, Okay, yes, I know what you mean. Let me turn the volume up a little bit because I can't hear myself. So, can I, can I just share an exercise right away? I'll just give you an exercise, okay, instead of just demonstrating it, which uh, would make my ego really happy, but I think for you it would be better if I... I'm just going to give you an exercise you can work on, okay? I'm, I hope I'm not talking below your level. If I am, I do apologize. I don't mean to be patronizing. So, if uh, you want to bend a whole tone, or I mean a whole step, or a half step, it doesn't matter, and vibrate that, I guess. So here's what I would do first. First, you really have to get your vibrato, your, your, your uh, bending correct. And I've seen a lot of students, a lot of students, they go like, man, I, don't, I sound so amateurish. And it's always, almost always about the bends and the vibrato. So first thing is, you really want to hear where you're going with the bend. You want to know where you're going, otherwise you're just guessing. Is that right? Is that right? They all kind of sound right to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but they're not, right? So that's the first thing. Let me just give a bit of distortion so that... So that it lasts a bit longer. All right, so first things first, you have to know where you're going. And in time, you will be able to hear a note and hear the interval where you want to go to. So if you can hear a minor third, you can hear a major second. If it's bent, you know, it's limited, so usually up to a maybe a minor, major third, maybe the most, two whole steps. You hear that, and if you can't hear it, you can just do this. Get a note, and just for the first time in your practice session, you listen to your destination. And there's no limit here. You can listen to it as many times as you want. Kind of meditate on the note. Now you hit it. You can hear it, right? You can hear where it's spot on, where it's just right there, yeah? Okay, so now, if your technique, which I think is what you're asking, if your technique is not really up to it, you will have a hard time sticking to that note. You'll be, you'll be doing something like this. See, we're kind of close to it, but not quite. Or we reach it and then we start losing altitude or... So that's the first thing that you should focus on. If I know where I'm going, then I need a technique that supports it. Now, if your hand is small, you sh should still be able to put some part of your thumb on the fretboard. And think of that this fretboard is a bit wider than usual. So I have a big hand, but look how much thumb I got left. And you don't need all that. You can just do it like this, right? So try to do that. And the fulcrum of your vibrato should be here in the hand, right there. And the whole movement comes from the forearm. So don't move your wrist or your fingers. The fingers don't move with a bend. You see that? Look at the, look at, I'm gonna get to the vibrato, right? I, I hope I'm not taking too long. I just, these things fascinate me, you know? But if I, look at, look at my fingers. They never stretch, look. You see that? I never do this, I'm never, stretch them out. I'm always, if I have this angle here, that angle stays through the whole thing. 
So why am I talking about this? Well, because if I want to do a vibrato on this, I have to vibrate a note that, that's already produced by quite a bit of tension and the tension is falling on my finger. If the tension is falling on my finger and my finger is supporting the tension only by the strength of these little tendons, then I'm gonna have a hard time. So I want to, you know, I want to just unload that load onto my forearm, which is strong enough to keep me here for as long as I want. Now when I'm here, now I start vibrating. Downwards or upwards. But you hear every time I go down, I'm returning to the starting point. I'm doing bam. So, the, sorry for my singing, but I'm always able to go back. And the reason is that my thumb is here. So in your case, you really have to kind of work your way until you, you know, your way to this technique to have your thumb here. Maybe lower it a bit, but still do it. Because if you do it like this, your fulcrum will be somewhere around the middle of the hand. And then you have to do this. And that will bring all your effort onto the fingers. And they're really not really well equipped to do it. You might, be, you might get away with a half step. But you see, it's really hard to maintain. So if you want a precise vibrato, I would suggest always use your thumb. Even if it's a half step, right? Uh, if it's a half step. Right? I'm always, always at that note, okay? So in normal vibrato, you want to vibrate a note. You probably seen the video last week, right? So you always want that note to go back to, to, home, to zero. So if I'm starting from zero, I do my vibrato, one, back to zero, one, back to zero. I don't want the vibrato to start going up, out of tune. When I do it with, uh, with um, a bend, I want the bend to be solid that when I add the vibrato to it, I'm always going back to the, to the zero. And I'm doing this blind uh, because I have a problem with my microphone. I can't really hear a, a significant volume of what I'm doing. But just from muscle memory, I think it's pretty close in tune. And that's what you'll develop. You'll develop a, an understanding of, of um, the mechanics actually of tuning. So you'll be able to basically tune by, by memory, just on the fret, on the string. They're all different, but you'll get used to it. So maybe, Patrick, I answered your question a bit too in depth, but uh, let me know if there's anything else you need. So, yeah. Ricardo says, thank you, Andre, very useful. Yes, oh, it's very useful for that, and you're very welcome. Jenny, I think I'm ready for lessons, all right. Patrick, brilliant. All right, you sure? You got everything you needed? Let me know if you don't feel bad, you know, don't feel shy or anything if there's anything else, you know. That's kind of why we're here. So what do you guys think? Do you, do you enjoy this kind of thing a bit more um, open or you prefer when I have a topic for each week? That's getting pretty hard because you guys, you, you guys know a lot and we've been doing a lot of these. But yeah, any other questions? Otherwise, I'll plug something. You want me to plug my records? <laughs> I'll plug my records. I have no shame. Check this out. All the CDs. You can get them all for 36 euros. I won't blame you if you don't. How many? Actually, you know what? How many of you still have CD players? Because I, I have a lot. I have hundreds of CDs, and I still buy them to support. Um, you know, whatever. If a band I like make a they make a CD, I, I, I get it. But do you have actual CD players at home? I think more people now have vinyl players almost than, uh, than... Oh, Alex, do you still play all the synths, keys? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, the project that's coming up that I can't talk about yet, um, I'll do quite a bit of synth. And, uh, and then I play piano every day. I do my two hours every day for no reason, basically, at all. I've been doing it for two years now. I'm, you know, and... and uh, and it makes me happy to do it. So, and it really opens up certain muscles, you know, in your brain. And I find it very useful. But yes, I still play and drums, you know, I play a bunch of instruments, not too well, a lot, a lot of them, 
but it's fine. Most of it is just, uh, you know, I started out and uh, my favorite band, you all know it's Queen. You, you all know that it's Queen. And, um, and Queen, you know, they're a big band, and, but they always had this little bit of DIY, like if you're not do-yourself, um, handmade thing, homemade stuff. And it's true, they, they often had their own studio. They eventually bought one. Uh, they took care of pretty much everything themselves. And then I, I got in, in, into prints a lot. And, and, you know, back then it was the eight, I was, well, probably the early 90s. And uh, you didn't quite know anything about these people, but you read in all these magazines that he started with, every, with a four track or an eight track and he would do everything himself with a drum machine. And that always fascinated me. It was always one of the most fascinating things to me ever to understand that. And I was in a band. I loved being a band. I felt like it wasn't, you know, the band was the band. Nobody was more important than anybody else. But I also enjoyed the idea that I could wake up one day with an idea in my head and be able to play it. And so I started very early on to look at myself not only as a guitar player, but as, as a, a composer and musician with poor results in the beginning. You know, I said, I'm a composer and my music sucked when I was outside the band because I didn't have any feedback and I didn't know how to deal with that. But drop my pick again. I always drop my pick. But yeah, so I, I play all instruments and I, I try to learn a few, you know, the, the Irish flute. I, yeah, I went to India to study sitar and uh, yeah. Patrick, so just to clarify, you bend to the target note, release and come back. No, 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 that's right, Patrick, but you can do both. And let me get my pick. You know, I have 5,000 picks in my studio and 4,999 that are on the floor. I have no idea. Let me see if I got one in my pocket. I think that was my pocket pick. Okay, well, this is not the one I was looking for, <laughs> but I use this, right? So Patrick, basically, what I mean is you can, you can bend up to a note. Let's do, uh, let's be here. Now, you hear home. Now I can go down and up. Or I can go up and back. Wider. Or, you know, short or smaller, but I'm still going back home all the time. I'm still reverting back to the zero. And that's, the, that's, the, the, that's key. As a matter of fact, that's a great question, Patrick, because when you bend and then you do the vibrato, you open a new possibility, which is vibrating downwards. As you know, if I'm not bending, it doesn't matter what directions I'm going, what direction I'm going, I'm always, um, I'm always raising the the note and then falling back down so certainly you can do both yes uh, that is art are there really differences between the different quality strings say all the strings around say 18 to 22 usa prices um you know i have no idea i've been using dadario for such a long time but i have tried uh, when i don't know when oh yeah i broke a string once and uh let me just preface this by saying that uh that when I, I never change strings, you know, I'm very bad with that. I, I only change strings before concerts. I've recorded songs that have gone to become, you know, my, like some of the staples in my live shows and whatever, you know, people, the, the songs that people like the most. And uh, some of them were recorded with very old strings. I just don't have it in me. I just don't have it in me to pull, you know, all the strings down and put them back up. So I'm not an expert on strings, but I have heard differences. So. If somebody lends me, uh, because sometimes they send me stuff like try these strings and I'm not sponsored by the Dario. As a matter of fact, I can't get in touch with them. You know, I was doing the Parker thing and I said, well, maybe now it's time to do something with the Dario and nobody got in touch with me. So I think they just don't care, but uh, I still use them and uh, they're very, uh, I just enjoy the, the, the feel of them, but I don't think they're really any better. Maybe it's just that I'm so used to it and I'm kind of, I'm kind of lazy in that way, so I don't want to change things that work. But I've tried Ernie Ball, of course. I've tried the, what were they called? The, the D Markley. I don't like those because they have a coating on them. But as far as sound, I mean, some of them are a little bit brighter, some of them are a bit deadier. But you know, when, I, when you do what I do, that you don't change them, then they kind of level out pretty quick. So, all right, Patrick. Thanks again for the support. It's very much appreciated. See you next week. So let's see. 
I'm the proud owner of a Field the Sky Science City. Oh, yes, you are, of course. Thank you. I was quite amazed with Prince's guitar abilities, never really looked much into his playing, but when I saw one of his videos where he did a Wicked solo, well, he did only Wicked solo. You know, if you see Prince, you can watch Prince, con Prince concerts going back to the early 80s, and he's killing it on guitar. He's a great guitar player, incredible guitar player. And, um, and um, you know, it's, I don't know, to me, after his vocals, the guitar is like his top thing. Because uh, even the vocals, you know, he's a great singer, but you can think of better singers. And maybe you can think of, you know, better dancers, not that I'm any, any authority on it. You can think certain of better guitar players and better drummers, but all into one. And the, the incredible thing about Prince was the songwriting. So he wrote great song after great song after great song, and he never stopped. And so, you know, Prince to me is just amazing, amazing. I like the production of your latest album and want to ask how it changed from the previous ones. Did you get more focused on learning mixing and mastering or someone else is involved? No, uh, you mean Mystic Electric. Mystic Electric, and there's a link for everything down here. Not, not to buy them, you know, you can buy them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at you if you did, but uh, you can just stream them. There's links to all the streaming services. So if you want to check it out, you know, Mystic Electric is uh, different because it's based more on, um, on electronic uh, drums. There's some live things, but a lot of it is based on really steady electronic um, percussion. And I had some really cool old uh, drum machines and I wanted to use them. And I had this bunch of songs that I said, okay, this is the time to do it. Even though there are some strange songs there that don't quite, you know, I didn't quite know how to treat, like uh, the, the one we just saw today, The Best We Can, that's a strange song to do in an electri on an electronic uh, oriented album. And then uh, as far as production, I did a lot of stuff with the guitar. Like for example, if you listen to the title track, it's called Mystic Electric. The whole intro is not a synth, it's a guitar with reverbs, with pedals and all kind of stuff, and then reversed and then layered with other guitars. And uh, so everything you hear, those little, Blup, blup, those little things they're made on purpose backwards so I kind of had to play them and then play them backwards see what it would sound like then play that straight then put it backwards so I would get the kind of effect but I could control it somehow and uh, it's very you know one thing about that record is that it's very I had a I think I showed you once I don't have it here I always have a notebook or two for each album and for Mystic Electric, there was a big, on the first page I wrote with big letters, I wrote articulation, which means that I wanted the album to be very precise, not cold, but the guitar playing. I wanted the guitar, well, not with this pick probably, but the guitar to be really, you know, not, you know what I mean? The, the, the articulation, each note, you can hear it in the, okay, I shouldn't do it with this. I, I'm gonna look bad, like I don't know what I'm doing. You know, that effect, very precise. And uh, so that's part of the production. And Lights and Shadows, which is the previous one, it was an improvement on Feel the Sky because we went to a big studio for drums. We did, uh, you know, I, ha I had gotten a lot of equipment that was, you know, really good preamps. I got, you know, for the bass and uh, for m I mic'd a bunch of guitars and, uh, you know, Feel the Sky was actually done very minimalistically. As a matter of fact, one is my most popular song. And uh, I'm always like, man, you know, but then I listen to it and I like it, but it does, you know, I, I did the drums in the garage of my drummer or yes, actually in his garage. And then I took it home and some of the tracks weren't working because we were using an old mixer. And then I only had really, at the time I had one of the JVMs, the old one and the cabinet, the Palmer cabinet. And I did the whole record with it. And uh, you know, so, you get better and you get better gear and you learn how to use it and that's kind of the natural evolution so but mastering i do all the mixing which also of course improves with time and all my mastering has always been done by john cooney birdie and john cooney birdie you'll know him probably you know he was the he's been the producer of all pretty much almost all of the joe satriani records since i think since uh, surfing with the alien or even not of this earth so um, you know, he's great. He's done a lot of work with Aerosmith and with, uh, with, uh, we, we did, uh, everybody, you know, he did the Dead Kennedys when they started out, it, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, I met him one time and I said, can I send you stuff? He said, yes. And he would work with me and we've been going since 2008. We've been together. So together. Well, I mean, you know, he's been working with me. All right. So, um, 
talking about Prince, how can one start to pick up that funk strumming? Slow on the... Oh yes, you have to be precise. You have to be very precise. You don't want to do this. Like that. You, that's not going anywhere. Right? You want to be very precise. I don't know why I'm using this. You know, I do apologize. I have to look for my pick. This was on the floor too. And I can't believe that there's no other picks around here. All right, I'll do it with this. Don't hold me to it though, right? So, yeah, you want to be very precise. You see, it doesn't matter what you play, but it's bam, bam, bam. It's completely steady. You have to master rhythm. And uh, that's before you worry about funk or not funk. Does it make sense, Ricardo? You're not being a pain, not at all. That's why we're here. That's why I'm calling this Q&A, so you, you get to do the Qs and I get to do the As. Uh, Lights and Shadows, your favorite record, song and album. All right, cool, thanks. And Funky Robot sounds like Joe Satriani, really? Okay, that's cool, I don't mind. You know, when you get to in instrumental music, as a matter of fact, somebody said that uh, one reminded them of somebody that I never heard. And it's fine. It's fine because, uh, because that's what it is. You know, you play, some people say that Mozart sounds like Beethoven or the, you know, the other way around. And it's fine too because it's, it's, uh, there's certainly worse people to be compared to than Joe Satriani. I have no issue with that at all. And great guy too. So that helps. I'm intermediate guitar player. No some chord scales, and I don't know how to move forward. Please help. Well, Onkar, let's, uh, what's up, Onkar? You're new here, so do you mind sharing where you're from? Because I really get a kick out of it. Well, Onkar, I think uh, YouTube is good, but and uh, as hard as I try, if uh, you know, for I don't want to harp on to my one chord a week thing, but as hard as I try to cover everything, it's impossible to do it on in a video. So I understand the limitations of YouTube. I understand that you can't really learn on YouTube uh, because none of us had it when we started out and we, we, we kind of turned out okay as far as guitar goes, I think. And a lot of guitar players we talk about, they are, um, they are the, you know, they never went to, you know, they never had access to any of this. And the reason is that YouTube gives you all the information, but it's impossible. It doesn't matter what people tell you. It's impossible that they will sh really teach you what you need to know. So when I do a chord, I just put it out there and I hope that somebody will make the most out of it and some of them will make just a little bit out of it. And when I do a video on chord, even when I do this video, which basically is like me answering your questions, but I, I, don't know, I don't see you playing, I don't know how you hold the pick, I don't know what your sense of time is, I don't know what you know about music, I don't know what you know about intervals, I don't know how your year is going, I don't know anything about that. So I can give you everything, you know, I'm doing 100%, I promise. I'm trying to give you everything I know, but it's, in, it's really not possible with this format. So um, I think you should find a good teacher. And if where you live it's possible, you should probably find one, uh, you know, talk to, to, this, to, to his students or her student, make sure he's good, make sure he has a lot of them. He has experience with maybe one or two or 300 students in his lifetime and that he has experience doing what you want to do. So you want to be a good musician, he should be a good musician. Can he write good music? Can he perform live? Can he, has he done it or she? If not, then you should, um, um, you know, you should go for somebody else. If you want, down here there's a link and you can get in touch with me for private lessons. But it's normal that you have a hard time. And you're in India, that's, oh, that's great. I loved India, loved it. I, I can't wait to go back. And uh, we have quite a few people here that join us in these, on these videos that are from India. Most likely your pick is your, your second favorite guitar. I don't have a second favorite guitar. They're all my favorite guitars. No, I don't know where, I, th there's like hundreds around here. And uh, Alex, you gotta go. It was good to see you. Thanks again for that cover. Everybody, please check out the cover he recorded of one on his YouTube channel. Sounds great. Yeah, there is art. I, I know. I'll find it. So I'm uh, available for a couple more questions if you want. Otherwise, we'll adjourn to something else. Let me just say, for those of you, it doesn't matter if you're here or you come from the future, if you enjoy the channel, if you find useful things, and if you, um, you know, get something out of this. Wait. Um, 
Onkar, stay there because I will give you a couple of advice, a bit of advice anyway, all right, to get started. But uh, if you want to contribute to the channel, make sure that it keeps going because it's a lot of work, as you can imagine, and a lot of time. Uh, you can, if you want, do contributions. There's a link, but it's not a Patreon thing because I will put all the, all the content out anyway. And so you can get it for free because some people just, they would like to contribute, but they can't, and that's fine. I don't want them to miss out on anything. But if you are in the position that you can contribute, it really helps out because uh, it really um, keeps things going. And if I need to buy new things for the streams or if I just, you know, basic services, then I can keep doing it. All right. So you are free to uh, contribute and it's very much appreciated. And uh, let's see, Onkar, yes. One video for intermediate guitar. Well, there's a lot of videos for intermediate guitar players. Onkar, you should check out my guitar encyclopedia that came out a few years ago. It's still on the channel. It's all organized by playlists. And it really starts from the beginning. If it is technique, you should check out the books that I talked about at the beginning. Okay, Th those books will help you. And there's one free one, the free ebook. Otherwise, the alternate picking and legato will get you started. That's a pr that's 100% uh, sh for sure. But if you want to improve, you should learn a little bit about music because otherwise you'll collect chords and scales without really knowing exactly what it is you're doing. And so I suggest you get a good, maybe a, a good teacher will help. Otherwise you can try yourself and uh, get into the basics, get into intervals, get into major scales, you know, get into the minor scales, really get deep with them because everything else is deriving from those. So if you really understand your your intervals and you really 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 uh, understand the <clears throat> um, y intervals and and the basic scales the major scale if you get those two things really really well then everything else can be brought back to those you know so you can you can start for a solid foundation and you can work your way up how to select genre because my teacher asks me always your style of music or whatever you want. You shouldn't pick anything. You should just play what you want. It will kind of sort itself out, you know. I don't know what music you like, but uh, anything, you know, if you're a beginner or intermediate, everything works. It becomes m more difficult later. You know, if you become very advanced, then you'll, you'll have fewer things to discover. But in the beginning, you can, if something inspires you, do that. Don't worry about at all about styles or genre or uh, difficulty or technicalities, just do what you like, do what you like, because that's a trick. You have to be able to get up every morning, sit down and play guitar for four or five hours or two hours or half an hour. It doesn't matter, but you have to do it every day. So find something that inspires you. That's more important than the specifics. All right. So we've well, been going for about an hour already. So maybe we should uh, stop here. Maybe we could do one more of these next week. I really enjoy just talking to you and see if I can help you out. After music, I practice whatever will help me play what I like better, I think, for the most part. Yes, so it all depends on how much time you have, how much time you dedicate. You like jazz and blues, so yeah, get a teacher that, understand that, that understands that. But still, it doesn't matter what you like. If you don't know every single major scale all across the fretboard in every key, that's what you have to do. If you don't know what the intervals are and how they sound that's what you have to do and if you don't know the basic chords uh, that's what you have to do that's is that easy for chords i can help you with the one chord a week series but everything else you've got to just find the source of information you trust and a teacher is good because a teacher has done all the work already you know you don't have to do it all over again go through all the books and go through all the things and uh, don't trust YouTube too much because a lot of people talk without really knowing what they're doing. They're just trying to put a new video out. And this might be controversial. So I don't care. I've seen so many students come in and they've been working off YouTube for years and they've gone nowhere. So a lot of people don't know what they're doing, but they make videos about it anyway. A lot of people know what they're doing and they make good videos with good intentions, but it's still not is not the answer if you are somebody who needs a teacher. If you're somebody that play, I play 12 or 13 hours every single day for years. And so, you know, it's different. But if you play one hour a day, then, then you have to know what you're doing. You have to trust that what you're doing in that hour is useful. Because I, if I play 13 hours, I can maybe waste four hours and I'm still left with eight useful ones. If you only play one hour, you don't want to waste half an hour 
because you know you're not going to go anywhere so that's why teachers are important for people who are just practicing normally you know not obsessive about it and uh it's an opinion maybe but it is based on more than 20 years of seeing students struggle and f struggling myself of course because i've gone through a lot of stuff with guitar and a lot of frustration and a lot of you know uh, a lot of uh, just difficult periods when I was trying to enter a certain thing so transitioning from live playing to the studio was hard because I was like you know this is totally new and uh, composing music alone instead of in a band and moving to instrumental music instead of regular rock music it was all a discovery and I had to do it all myself so if you have 12 or 13 hours a day you can do it yourself otherwise get somebody good who knows what they're doing and they're, they, don't, they don't hold anything back nothing at all they have to give you everything they got so i hope it helps i'm sure there's somebody close to where you live maybe who can do that for you all right if not then send me an email <laughs> but yeah all right everyone so i hope it was fun and uh, i will let you know about the new the new series of videos uh, because i will be done pretty soon with the one chord a week but you don't have to worry about it you'll be watching that until september or october so and uh, that's it so I look forward to seeing you next week if there's anything else you need to tell me now is the time because it will be gone in just a couple of minutes thank you so much oh you're welcome no problem at all and uh, Onkar get the the free book because it's free i don't feel bad at all for selling you this because you don't have to pay anything all right get this book the 21 leaks find a song of the out of all those 21 songs maybe you'll find one that you like and uh, try to play what you see on the page all right it was it still it still works every you know everything you do if you do it properly will will help you will forward you all right all right everyone that is art you're welcome have a great one. I will see you next week. And if you have suggestions and stuff like that, and in the chord videos, if you want, comment, because I would really like to know what, what these chords mean to you, if you're using them or if they're not for you, you know, whatever. It really helps me out, okay? So I'll see you next week. Have a great one and uh, stay safe. Bye. <laughs>